Thank you for joining me today. It's a pleasure to have you here. <laughs> Thank you for having me. And uh, let's start with the easy questions. This is the most you guys have gone without touring, willingly at least. How did you <laughs> keep yourself sane and entertained during the pandemic? Um, I'm in a fortunate uh, position that I uh, adapt myself uh, easily to new situations. And uh, so during this pandemic, uh, I found a lot of other things in, in life that I really enjoy myself uh, with doing so. And uh, one of them is uh, working in the garden. Uh, I, I like to also work at my house. Uh, I already liked uh, sporting, like uh, running, uh, cycling, swimming. So these kind of things uh, I do now even more often than uh, before. That's good. Now your new album Omega is coming out in a few weeks. How are you feeling about it? I'm very proud, first of all, of the, 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 what we have achieved and uh, very excited about now finally the fans are going to hear it. And uh, so uh, I'm really curious what people are going to think about it. Now, there has been a five year gap between the holographic principle and Omega. Can you walk us through what happened during that time? Yeah, first of all, we had uh, two EPs uh, released uh, and also uh, we made a book, uh, The Essence of Epica. So there was quite a lot of things going on behind the scenes, even though we have five years, uh, uh, seems like a long period, but for us it was like uh, flying, uh, uh, the, the time was flying. And uh, for us, it doesn't feel like five years. Uh, you guys are releasing an album while the world is at a critical point. How important was it for you to provide people with art they can relate to and ease what they may be going through? Yeah, I, I think that nowadays, uh, especially during these hard times, people are in need of music. I, at least that's what I hear a lot from, from, from people. And um, so I think to release an album, even though you cannot tour right, right after, so some say it's a, it's a disadvantage, but I say it, it is an advantage to release an album during this uh, pandemic because now music can help people. And when all this all is over, it's, it's easy to release an album and tour right after, but it's not only about that, it's also about uh, being there for each other. And now and that people uh, can now listen to the new album for me, it's more important that, that, than that we can release an album and right away tour after that. Uh, this was also the first time you guys recorded separately. How was that experience? Did it feel weird? Is it something that you could see yourself doing again in the future? Provided was, that the situation is better, of course. Yeah, it was just partly because the, the big part of the album was already recorded the old uh, the old way. Like uh, everybody was still in this, could uh, enter the studio at the same time. Um, just uh, uh, Simone and my vocals, they were recorded uh, separately because then the pandemic uh, hit harder and the, the lockdown started to take place. So that was the moment that uh, I couldn't leave my home anymore in Italy. There was a very strict lockdown in this, this first uh, period. Uh, it, I was locked in my house for like two and a half months. And, uh, but I still had to record my, my, my vocal lines, um, my vocals, uh, uh, I, I have to say. And so I recorded them uh, at home and in my home studio. Luckily, I, had, uh, I, have, I have a home studio and just had new equipment. So I was... Uh, yeah, very lucky. And Simone recorded hers in, uh, in a studio in Stuttgart. So she was uh, also able to record without any big issues. And she was also closer to home, which I think I've heard her say in an interview was very important this time. Yeah, yeah. That was also good for her because uh, then, uh, yeah, she could also take care of her child because she can also not go to school. So it's uh, everything is different than, than it usually is. And uh, we all have to find our way to, to, to make everything possible and, and still, uh, uh, yeah, also find happiness in life because, uh, yeah, everything is different, like I said. And, and it's very important that we um, still give our life uh, uh, purpose because uh, it's, so, it's easy to get lost in a, in a circle of negativity in these days. And, uh, that's, uh, that's something I, I try very much to avoid. Uh, we will circle back to that because I have a question about it. Uh, but first, uh, I think Simona said in an interview that the album was going to be called Omega Point. Uh, was that correct? 
Yeah, it was one of the options that were uh, on the on the table. That we had several options, and uh, but uh, we voted for Omega in the end because we thought it was a stronger album title than than the Omega Point. Uh, the Omega Point is a very beautiful theory, but the point point is not such a nice word. So in in the end, we chose just Omega. And I think people will notice that the intro song is called Alpha and the final song is called Omega. So there's this yes. whole uh, circle there, which I found beautiful. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's what, that works really well like that. Yeah. Uh, what is the meaning behind Omega and what does it represent to you? Yeah, for me, that has the, the direct link to the Omega Point theory. And that's a theory that uh, the universe is fated to swirl towards one point of unification. And uh, for me, that was a very beautiful concept. And that was the starting point of, of many of the lyrics. And uh, so also Omega, uh, I don't uh, uh, link it to, to the end of something, but more like to the Omega Point theory. And uh, I, I actually don't believe in endings anyway. Uh, for every ending is a new beginning in, in, in a way. So uh, for me, nothing is, is ending definitely and uh, not even life, because I think the essence of what we truly are is not ending with, with the end of the physical body. See, this is why I like picking your brain. The last couple of albums dealt with quantum physics and Omega, I thought, takes a more, not personal necessarily, but a more uh, human-centric turn. It explores yes. the duality of light and darkness, primarily, yes. and good and evil on a second level which is, I think, very relevant to the times that we live in. Uh, was it hard to keep a balance while writing and not let the darkness take over your creative process? Uh, luckily not, because uh, all the lyrics were already finished before the pandemic uh, uh, started. But the, the funny thing is, or the, the coincidence, but even though coincidence not, not really exists, is that the, 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 the lyrics fit really well with the current situation. So it's like it was meant to be. And um, maybe if we would have written the lyrics during the pandemic, then it could have easily, especially during the, 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 the harder parts of the pandemic, could have easily, indeed, the negativity could have taken over. But like this, as it's written already before, uh, it didn't happen. So I'm really happy that the, the lyrics are exactly the way they are and that they can be very helpful during the, the current times. What was that fascinated you about this theme? About the duality yes. or the light and darkness? Uh, it fascinated me that I, I it, it was really a recurrent theme in the Emerald Tablets that I read. And the Emerald Tablets, they are very old wisdom teachings. And uh, basically the oldest uh, wisdom teachings that have been found on, on the planet, uh, carved in, in, in stone. So it's uh, also a lot of uh, things ended up from, from there in the Bible or in other uh, religious uh, beliefs and spiritual beliefs. So it's, it's like the origin of, of many uh, books. And uh, uh, yeah, the recurrent theme in that is a lot of, of duality, light, darkness, that we all have this light and darkness inside of us and that we can choose what we want to be more. So if we are more like feeding the darker side of us, we become more of this also for people around us, but especially for ourselves. But if we more feed like the, the, the other side, the empathic side, the happy helpfulness, uh, joy, then we become a, a person to be uh, more uh, positive and people like to be surrounded with. And especially for yourself, you become also a very much more pleasant person for yourself. So it all comes down to this duality between light and dark, because I think everybody has this dark side inside of him and her. And um, it, there's not just one, one guy like, uh, like Hitler, who is a terrible guy, and, and we have nothing to do with that. We all have this terrible dark side inside of us. I'm not saying that we're all able to do what Hitler did, but uh, he's the very, very extreme part of the dark side. But we all have this, this dark element inside of us, but, and it's all necessary also, but we have to keep a, a certain balance and try to become uh, what we wish to be. And, and, and that's usually when, when I speak with people, what they wish to be is not often what they are actually doing. But if we strive for becoming 
what we wish to be, then we can, I think we can make really this world, this big shift and become like the person we want to be and, and living in a, in a much better place for all of us. This is actually a very great segue for my next question. Uh, and as I mentioned, I love picking your brain. While listening to the lyrics of some of the songs, I really felt that you touched on the nature versus nurture argument. And my question is, while writing, did you approach the notion of good and evil as innate parts of human nature or as a construction aiming to punish certain behaviors and reward others? Yeah, it's a good uh, question because uh, it's always the question, what, what's the nature part and what's the nurture part? And um, uh, yeah, in a way, uh, when we get born and, and very, very soon already babies start finding out what is helpful for them. So when they start crying, they get attention. And, and, and it's even in some, some form of, uh, because uh, uh, friends of mine, they, they just got an, a baby and, and we're sometimes talking about it. I, I never had a child myself, so I, I don't know it from first hand, but they say, because I, I tend to believe, I used to believe that uh, we all get born uh, and then pure goodness. But they say, no, no, it's not like that. Uh, a baby already has this evil part inside of them. So I think we are born already with the, the, the good and evil part inside of us. Because of the stories that I hear from my friends, <laughs> I, I changed my opinion about that. <laughs> Okay, that was definitely not what I was expecting to hear, but wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can I can really feel that. Uh, this album also sees uh, the end of the trilogy for Kingdom of Heaven. And uh, the yeah. first part of, it, it is a trilogy, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. definitely, yes. The first part was uh, in uh, the A New Age Dawn saga, which I believe yes. is completed. Yeah, it feels like completed. Yeah. But doesn't the existence of two more songs in the same, not theme necessarily, but in the same vein, uh, imply that the other storyline is still going? Yeah, there is indeed the, the A New Age Dawn storyline. And within that A New Age Dawn storyline, there is the Kingdom of Heaven, which has this kind of side branch and, and, and got his started living its own life that's that's the way how i see it and the funny thing is when i was working on kingdom of heaven part two i actually forgot that uh, kingdom of heaven part one was part of a new age dance <laughs> so i found out pretty late in the process myself <laughs> oh my so now i see it like uh, that like the branch out of the concept of a new age dawn that started living its own life so do you think there's a chance we may also see a prequel I never say never, but it feels like finished like this. Okay. We know that sometimes Epica songs become Mayan songs. Be honest yeah. now, are there any songs, the Epica songs that could have been Mayan material? Uh, on the, on this, this album? Yes. Um, yeah, I never think like that because uh, music ends up on, on on the band that where it has to be. And uh, there's always a reason for things to end up on a Mayan album or an Epica album. And every every song that ends up on, on this album uh, is where it belongs. And it also, they fit together. So I think none of these songs would have be able to, to be on, an, on a Mayan album this time. Because every song on, on Omega has its, its function. And, um, there's, there's sometimes uh, other ideas that don't make it and then start developing and then end up being a Mayan song that can happen. And it can also happen that there are some, some ideas left over that will turn into Mayan songs, but that I, I don't know yet that we'll have, we will have to see how things develop. Okay, thank you. Uh, we have seen in the recent months that many bands have resorted to live streaming to promote the new releases or to create, you know, a semblance of a live show and to keep contact with the fans. What are your views on that? And would you see Epica doing an Omega show before touring returns? Yeah, it's possible that we also will do a live stream. Uh, I'm personally not a big fan of live streams, uh, to be honest. 
but it's uh, better than nothing. That's also what I, that's my honest opinion. It's better than nothing. And uh, uh, I watched myself one part of a, of a stream that was the uh, uh, behemoth. And uh, I think they did a pretty cool job. But still, for me, the, the, the thing what I enjoy the most is uh, live shows by far. And uh, so I, I haven't seen any other live streams. Maybe that uh, the, the Nightwish one I will watch because uh, out of curiosity. Um, but um, yeah, like I said, it's better than nothing. And, and that's, that's for me what it, what it is. <laughs> okay, final question. And this is going to be hard. Oh. <laughs> if Epica were members of the Spice Girls, what would be your Spice names? I don't know, it's a Rob would be beard beard spice okay beard, beard spice <laughs> isaac would be uh, gray gray spice <laughs> simona would be red spice <laughs> that, would, that would work well and uh Arian would be uh, uh uh like how you say that sweaty spice <laughs> and uh, kun would be bold bold spice and myself i would be sporty spice Oh. No, I gave myself the most nice one. <laughs> I make fun of all the others. I give myself a nice one. That's also not nice. <laughs> it's okay. I liked everything you chose. Well, okay. we are done. Thank you so much for your time. You're welcome. And hopefully we will get to see you guys on tour next year. I hope so too. Again, fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah, because... Um, yeah, nobody knows how, how things will develop now. And uh, uh, it's a matter of uh, how, how the next months are going to develop, I guess. And then we know more if uh, things starting to get possible again with, with uh, the outroll of vaccines, for example. So, yeah, let's see. Let's see. Well, have a good night and take care. You too. <laughs> bye bye. Bye. <laughs>